everybody. Today we are going to be doing the next one in our series for our beer. And this one you do not have to do most of the time. If you're a beginner, you do not have to do this. I do this because I have the equipment and it's not that big a deal. As you know, that first beer I'm making is that just the simple, easy way, you know, the export stout can that I'll be making. And it comes with the yeast here in a packet like this. Uh, a good reason to do this is you're proofing your yeast. Just like when you're baking, you're proving that everything is okay with it. It also gets the beer off to, or I should say the wort off to a better start as it's starting to ferment inside your uh, fermenting vessel. But you do not have to do this. This instructions, you can pour this pack right on top when you're done, and we'll be doing that tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if you'll get the video tomorrow, but uh, you'll, uh, when as I'm brewing it, you'll get it tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow. It just helps it kick off. Now, I will explain later what this means, but if your beer has a starting gravity of 1.040 or above, you do not have to know that. Uh, you should use some kind of starter. And if it's below it, you don't have to, but it's, it's nice to do it. Now, I have a stirring thing. Here's a flask that I have that will have everything in, and here's a stirring stick. It'll actually stir it for me. You do not need that. I started off with just a mason jar, and I would mix the stuff out. Every time I walked by it, I'd shake it up and mix it, you know, just take it and swirl it like that. And it would probably be stirred, you know, 10, 20 times a day, that is okay, okay? Because what you're actually doing is you're actually making a mini batch of beer to get your yeast really going and just in gear to go, which is, which is really good for your uh, beer when you start off. Uh, if you have a real big beer, which is above what I was telling you about the 1.040, what the big beer means is high alcohol. When you're starting off, you're having a lot of sugars in there. Well, a lot of times your yeast has a hard time starting with that much alcohol in there and it just struggles. So it is good. Now, I am using dried malt extract. You can see it in here, it's just a powder. It's like, like a very, very fine powder. You know, it's, it's, it's almost, it's, it's pretty much like the consistency of powdered sugar or even finer than flour. It's just really, really fine. But the ratio you use when you make this is a half a cup of uh, dried malt extract to two cups of water. And that gives you a gravity of about 1.040, just ballpark right there. Uh, and you'll understand about the, uh, the gravity later, like I said. But all you want to do with this is you start heating your water up. Now you take your dry malt. Now I started heating this water up already and I'm just barely starting to see bubbles. You pour it in. Uh, it's easiest if you mix it a little as you're stirring it in, but that's fine, I'm not gonna. Now this stuff boils over very easy. It's gonna boil pretty quick here since I got the temperature up. Uh, stir this constantly, don't go anywhere. If this spills over and gets on your stove, it's gonna be like, yeah, it's going to burn and it dries and it sticks because it's really, really, really sticky. So that's what you want to do. And while I'm getting ready for this, I'm going to talk about my stir sand, star sand. Here's that sanitizer I was telling you about that I used. And I have it inside my flask right here. So I'm just going to empty it out. And this is the kind, remember, where I do not have to rinse. I do not have to rinse. Now, you're going to see some bubbles in here. That is okay. That is perfectly okay. Don't fear the bubbles. This was sanitized too. Now, the reason I like using the flask is I can put this hot water right in here. Now, you can cook on top of this. If you have a fire, you know, a gas stove, you can cook it right on here and just keep stirring it. I don't like doing that even if it's this kind of heat because with the narrow top this stuff wants to boil over immediately anyway and with the narrow top it just shoots out a big time so I don't like doing that 
Uh, what I'm doing now when I'm stirring is I'm just making sure there's no more clumps and there is absolutely no more clumps. So now I'm just waiting for this to, to boil. Now, if this wasn't sanitized, it's not that big a deal because we're putting boiling water and it'll sanitize it. Same with this. I do, though, just because, hey, it, it, it's not that big a deal to sanitize it. You saw how easy it was. With this Star Sam, you use one ounce per five gallons of water. So you can see I hardly used any for this here. And if you're a metric person, uh, the two cups is just a little bit more than the 500 milliliters over here. So you can do that too, to a half a cup of dried malt extract. There's different kind of dried malt extract. It doesn't matter which type. I use light because I usually have a lot of light on hand. Uh, basically dried malt extract is like the liquid. We were talking about extract in the other video, except it's in powdered form. You could also use dried malt extract to raise your gravity, your of the, your starting gravity or your beer, which means you're basically that means you're having more sugars in it. If you have more sugars, the alcohol will eat more. This here wants this here can wants you to add uh, two and a half pounds of uh, corn sugar. It say sugar, but then they say brewer sugar, which is corn sugar. Well, I'm going to add that, but I'm also going to add more dried malt extract to it because I want that stout to have a little higher alcohol. We're going to make a coffee stout, and I want to make it kind of a higher alcohol one. I want one that's, when I have one, it's one beer. That's all I want. Uh, good tasting, but the beer, you know, you know you've had a beer when you've had that. And we are just about to the boil. It's almost there and you can you can smell that that is that's to me the smell of beer right here uh, and then if you add hops to it oh, that's just oh that's just good stuff right there let me grab that out of the way there sorry about that now when you add this boiling water to here we're gonna cool it you do not want to add your yeast otherwise you're gonna kill the yeast and a mistake people make is I'll show you when they're cooling it I'll tell you about that in a second. This here is, we just came to a boil, so I'm going to take it off. And here's an advantage of having the flask here, is I don't have to worry about the temperature change for cracking. That easy. And if you heard that water turn on, that's a little trick you want to learn is, to uh, rinse the bowl right away because it is very, very, very sticky. So what I'm going to do now is, I this is just water in here. I'm actually going to be grabbing some ice to help cool this down quicker. And what this does is, and swirl it a little bit in there, that'll help. See what I'm doing in there is I'm just doing this, you can see. Only I'm doing that in the water. That gets more. The <laughs> mistake people makes is when the liquid gets real cool, they pour the yeast down in here right away. Well, the glass is still super hot and all those yeast die, even though the liquid's there. So this takes five to 10 minutes to cool it down. So that's, that's, you just have to be patient. And I usually get a little piece of tin foil on top to make sure nothing falls in. So as soon as this cools down, I'll let you know how long it took. Uh, we'll get back with it. Okay guys, we're back. Uh, it's here, it's nice and cool to the touch. I'm gonna talk about the stir stick right now. Turns it on and off, okay? And this speeds are slower. And what happens is there's a stir in there. In here, I just got it in sanitized solution, is a little metal stick that goes on top. And you can see, see how it spins that? What's gonna happen is, this is gonna be inside the water. When that spins, it stirs it, so I don't have to stir it. Like I said, you do not need this at all. 
okay? I did it for the longest time in a mason jar. You get great results. This, I had a, they had a really good sale. When I bought something, I got this for a really discounted price. That's why I got it, but I probably wouldn't have got it with that. Now, hindsight, I would have bought a flask. Now, this is a 2001. You can get a 1001, that works just as good. I would have bought this sooner if I known how good this is. I don't have to worry about the hot cold, you know, because it's tempered, you know. So yeah, but I would have did that than just. And so you can get the foam tops on there. I had one and I, I lost. Don't know where it's at. I just crinkle tin foil. What that's going to do? It's going to keep let the gas out, but really nothing go back in. So and like it says, you could just do this a few times a day with this. You're fine. You're good to go. So what you want to do is I got this in here and it's. I got my hands in the sanitizer, so it keeps the sanitized. I'm gonna take, let me back this up a little bit so you can see. I'm tilted, I apologize about that. There we go. All I did was I took the top off here. Now my hands in the sanitizing solution with this. You just don't wanna drop it in, you wanna slide it so it doesn't break, crack the bottom. I don't think it will, but hey, fair safe and sorry. And with that off, Take your yeast, there's different type of yeast you get. If you have a, a vial yeast, you shake it. If you have a smack pack, you probably wanted to smack it before you even you started this. These packs you just open up just like a bread yeast. And you try to get it in all the way down through the middle so you don't hit the sides as much as possible. I like that. It's pretty good there. Normally I don't do too that good on that. Okay, I'm sealing this here. Now I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna it's on low right now. You have a different speed. Let me turn this so you can see a little more. It's got different speeds. I'm gonna turn it up. Let me go down just a hair so you can see that. There you go. It's a better angle. And it's on. You can see there. You can see there it's on. And it's on low right now. And I should show you this. If you start doing it and nothing happens, take this to the side and you see your little plunger will go to the bottom. Go to the side and wheel it on in like that and that moves your plunger to the middle. So I don't want to go really fast right away because I don't want that powder stuff on top to kick off. And it's, it's pretty slow right now. You can kind of see it starting to move just a little. When we get faster we'll show you what it's like. As soon as I start seeing everything on the top incorporated, and I'm going to get in here a little closer for you guys. And you can kind of see on top here where there's no more of the powder on top, so I'm going to kick it up just a little bit faster. You don't want it so fast that it's spitting all over, but you don't want it too slow. Like I said, you can do this just the same, okay? That's just, that's fine. Now this has to re, like I says, if you lose it, just go like this, go to the middle, and it takes a minute for it to find it and get going. We'll take it and we'll speed it up again, little by little. And you can see it's not on. So where's it at right there? I'm glad that happened because you can kind of see this does happen once in a while. I think it's not catching. There it goes. I think it was just because it was on and it was spinning. So turn it off when you do that. I think I remember that from before, but see so now you can see it started immediately. So yeah, I think I remember that from before. If you have a hard time finding it, turn it off and do it. Now, if you turn it too fast, it's going to kick it off that magnet. So don't have it on too high. You just want it off where it's a nice stir. And with this little amount, you really don't have to have it on that high. And I'll just keep it here until tomorrow, until I brew. That's all there is to make an yeast starter. And like I said, please don't feel intimidated. You have to have one of these. If you want to proof it, just use a mason jar and you're good to go. So that's it. Um, I'll see you in the next video when we brew the beer.